Hello, my name is Brian Gray. I am the team leader for research services at the Kelvin Smith Library at Case Western Reserve University. In my role here as team leader for research services, I help to pick Summit as our local discovery service. I have also been involved at the consortial level in our statewide consortium called OhioLink, in which we picked UPSCO Discovery Service as the product that each university had available to them. In my role as a professor at the Kent State School of Library and Information Science, I teach future librarians on how to use Discovery Service and also how they can educate their patrons in their, their use. In this video, I want to introduce some foundational pieces of what is a Discovery Service and also what are the, some of the customizations and features you should be aware of. Later in this presentation, you're going to see some short videos. Each one will introduce one Discovery Service and point out a couple key features. Let's look at some key features of Discovery Services. First, one component you have to remember is that a link resolver needs to be available to allow the Discovery Service to point out to full text resources. Also, as you're exploring your local options, there's a lot of customization you can consider. Some of the Discovery Services allow end users to have accounts for the save information. All of them allow some type of branding, so you can have logos, colors, and other wording embedded into your discovery service. You might be able to embed your local chat service if you offer that. You can manage what resources are or are not available in the discovery service. You can take your discovery service out to your website, your libguides, and other web resources by embedding custom search boxes or embeddable widgets. Finally, you can manage what facets are used or not used, the order they're displayed in, and also, very importantly, you can pick which languages are available to your users. Now, there's some different philosophies and methods used in discovery services. Most discovery services are leased or a subscription model, and that's software service. So EBSCO Discovery Service and ProQuest Summon are examples. You're paying for them to host it, to maintain it, and to manage it and your users access it on their the EBSCO or the ProQuest websites. They maintain and offer various updates and changes based on customer feedback. The maintenance at the local level is largely restricted to the setting of the options and maintaining your link resolver. There's also some open source options available such as ViewFind. Open source will require some local expertise, some maintenance, you may have to host it locally. So even if the open source software is free, there will be local expenses and staffing you'll have to consider. Now earlier I mentioned link resolvers and I just want to make a distinction between a link resolver and a discovery service. Link resolver is the tool that points out to the online resources. So when somebody clicks on a full text link, this is the tool that decides if you have access and points it to the pre correct access point. You will have to maintain a database of these subscriptions and that tells the link resolver and the discovery service what is available and how to get to it. You may be able to reduce your workload by getting the link resolver and the discovery service from the same company. Sometimes you have to maintain it in two different locations if you get services from two different companies. Here's an example of maintaining the link resolver or discovery service. This is the administrative screen from Summon. You could see this title called Acquisitions Librarian. We put a check mark next to 360 Link, which is the link resolver, and a check mark next to Summon. So now both of these services know that our users have access to this title. Another setting that you adjust in your discovery service is languages. So these are examples of some of the languages available through various discovery services. You can see all the major languages are available. You can set these up so that the interface defaults to one of them and some of the discovery services you can also have a setting that the user can pick to change it to a new language. Facets is a critical component of discovery services. These are the options that you can limit sources they're often located down the left hand side of most of the services. You can see there's some common ones such as author, title, publication date. And each discovery service offers different facets. They can be turned on or turned off depending on the service. You might be able to change the order or even the wording of some of the facets. Some facets include information, some facets will exclude results. Later on you will get an opportunity to see some short videos at each discovery service. During those videos, I will take an opportunity to point out some of these major features in action. 